Betta fish have been domesticated for hundreds of years and bred for specifically aggression. So as soon as you have two males exposed to each other, they'll immediately engage in these really robust, aggressive displays. They take turns at flaring their fins and their gills at each other. One flares, the other one turns away. These displays can last 10 minutes before the fish actually proceed to biting. So their aggression has been magnified and that really gives us very robust behaviors that we can study to understand what's happening in the brain, what's happening in their genomes. I'm Andres Vendesky. In my lab, we study the evolution of social behaviors. Aggression is one of the ancient behaviors that we're interested in. Almost all species of animals show some aggression, so that really appeals to me. How did something that evolved hundreds of millions of years ago still persist? What are the commonalities across all of these animals? Or do they evolve uniquely in the different animal lineages? This has been an interest since Darwin and ancient times. People have bred animals to fight crickets and bulls against humans. They have done this with chickens, with gamecocks. But clearly we cannot bring just any animal to the lab and study how this behavior evolves, what are the genetic changes that were selected. So we leveraged Siamese fighting fish because they're amenable to be studied in the controlled conditions. These fish have the unique advantage that have been selectively bred intensively for hundreds of generations but we still have access to the wild fish, the ones bred for fighting and the ones bred as pets. And that becomes very powerful for three-way comparisons. Peyin Shi, she's a postdoctoral scientist in my lab and she's really the expert in these genetic comparisons. A lot of the genetic variations has been shaped during those years of domestication. So we have been looking at the genome sequence to see which parts of the genome differentiate the fighting fish from the wild fish. But she actually finds something very exciting, a very clear peak in one gene. Meaning those are the genes that might contribute to higher aggression behavior in fighting fish. It was a bit surprising because we could have expected changes in hormones like testosterone or, or testosterone signaling, but the gene we find is actually involved in how the axons grow and how they form synapses with other neurons. So it really gives us a molecular handle to study the behavior of this fish. We've really worked hard to be able to study their aggressive behavior in controlled experiments without actually hurting the animals. We focus on their aggressive displays. So this doesn't include any kind of contact or injury, but instead are these non-harmful cues, flaring and tail beating. So Claire is an expert neuroscientist and she has invented this uh, behavioral test. So one, we will put them in two separate tanks and when they see each other, they'll immediately engage in these aggressive displays. The second test we use is animations. So for instance, if interested in looking at the role of the shape of the fish in evoking aggression, we can manually change certain features of the model, such as the gill flaring or the fin size. And then she can use the same movie across hundreds of fish and, and there's very consistent responses showing us that again, there's something encoded in the brain of these animals that shape what they care about. Using the animations, we found that fish prefer to take turns flaring. Uh, another thing that we found is that when my animation is elevated, fish prefer to flare more. A lot of their aggression is to protect their nest, so that's close to the surface. That's something that we weren't expecting at all, but now it makes sense in retrospect. And finally, she has discovered a part of their brain have many similarities to our amygdala. So then she can remove the amygdala of the fish and now see how do they fight. And what's really interesting is that the fish still care about the same stimuli as before. They still synchronize to the animation. But instead what changes is the persistence and the scale of the aggressive response. Rather than how do they take turns, it's really modulating how long do they remain engaged in a fight. I'm really convinced that we can not understand behavior just by looking at the genes or by looking at the brain, but to study it from both perspectives. So we are modifying the fish genetically using CRISPR. We insert genes in their neurons that glow when their neurons become active. So we have a transparent line of fish that would allow us to kind of record what's happening in the brain real time as the fish engage with these animations without having to do a super invasive surgery. 
we're soon doing these types of experiments. But we can also knock out specific genes to get rid of them and see how that affects their behavior. So then we can establish precisely what's the gene's contribution to the behavior we are interested. I'm also excited about whether our findings in these animals apply to humans. Around 70% of their genes are present in humans, so we're very excited in publishing our work, making it known so other people can use that knowledge and see how this also extends to human behavior and human psychiatric conditions.